In this video, we will calculate the uh, equilibrium carrier concentrations. So, the number of charge carriers, electrons in the conduction band and the holes in the valence band, um, can be found by multiplying the total number of allow allowed states by the probability function. So, in here is the density of electrons or concentration of electrons in the conduction band as a function of energy and temperature in general and that is given by the density of states of the conduction band which is in general a function of energy and the probability of finding an electron at energy E at a given temperature T. Okay. Likewise, the concentration of holes in the valence band as a function of energy and, and temperature is given by the density of states of valence band times the probability of fi not finding an electron at an energy E. And that is given by 1 minus the probability of finding an electron at energy E. So this equation will sp specify electron concentration and hole concentration as a function of energy and temperature. G of E is the density of state in each band, which we calculated in the previous video. And all we need to know now is the probability of finding an electron at energy E at a given temperature T. Now, once we know this, then the total number of carriers in the band is simply given by integrating this quantity here, N of E and T, P of E and T across the entire band. For the conduction band, that means bottom of the conduction band, E sub C, to infinity. And then for the holes, uh, it starts from negative infinity to the top of the valence band, which is E sub V. Now, at equilibrium, uh, the occupation probability uh, for an electron for any energy state uh, energy uh, for any uh, electronic state is given by a function called the Fermi direct distribution function or Fermi direct probability function is shown here. So it's 1 over exponential E minus EF divided by KT plus 1. EF here is a quantity called Fermi level. K sub E is a Boltzmann uh, constant and T is the temperature in, in Kelvin. The Fermi direct function looks like this. So uh, it looks like more like a, it's like a step function and it transitions over at Fermi level. When energy is below Fermi level, probability is very high in general. And at energy is above the Fermi level, probability is low. And at zero temperature, this is a rigorous step function. Uh, but at a finite temperature, there is a gradual transition. At energy E equals EF, your probability of finding an electron is always one half. So yeah, you can do your own exercise uh, here. So suppose that you have a certain energy level distribution shown here. And if you, if you calculate the possible configuration of electrons according to the Pauli's exclusion principle saying that you can't have no more than two um, the, uh, you, you cannot have more than two electrons at any uh, um, energy level, and you can find all possible configuration of energy uh, electrons here and calculate their energy, plot it, you will find that it follows the Fermi direct distribution function very nicely. There are other probability functions, uh, Bose Einstein probability function shown here. The only difference between the Fermi direct function is that this uh, exponential factor is the same, but the sign in front of the additional plus one is now changed to minus one. Now, if you get rid of this one altogether, then you get the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution function. So, this Fermi direct and Bose Einstein distribution functions are quantum mechanical probability function. Fermi direct function applies to Particles called fermions, electrons and holes, are examples of fermions, so we use Fermi direct function. Uh, Bose Einstein function uh, applies to particles called bosons, and uh, examples of boson um, um, is a photon, light quantum, 
and some other atomic species also follow this, uh, known to follow this um, uh, Bose-Einstein distribution function. Um, if the exponential factor here is very large, then you can obviously ignore this additional plus or minus one. And in that case, both of these two functions then uh, reduce to get reduced to Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution function. This is the distribution function that describes classical particles. So if you plot Maxwell-Boltzmann, Bose-Einstein, Fermi, they're all together, you can see that they all converge into the single function for very high energy. That's the classical limit. Now, in semiconductors, we are dealing with uh, fermions, electrons and holes, so we we'll use Fermi direct distribution function. So, the total electron concentration in the conduction band, again, given by the integration uh, over the entire conduction band of the product then uh, G sub C times F, density of states of the conduction band times the Fermi direct distribution function. Whole concentration in the valence band, again, same thing, integration across this entire valence band of the product of density of state of the valence band times 1 minus F, probability of not finding an electron at energy E. So we already know what the density of states are. We calculated in the previous video. We now plug in the Fermi direct probability function for F here then you get these integration. Okay. Now, the integration is, is pictorially represented here. So this here is the density of states that we calculated at uh, 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 of the conduction band, which, goes, which increases as square root of E. Same thing here in the valence band. Now, at very high energy, the density of state will collapse. And the reason for that is because the uh, parabolic energy band approximation does not apply. It breaks down at energies uh, far away from the band edge. Um, but that's okay uh, because, as you will see in the Fermi direct distribution function, the probability of finding an electron at this very high energy becomes very, very small. It decreases exponentially. So, the density of state function not being accurate at very high energy is not relevant, it's not important. As long as you have an accurate description near the band edge, we're good. So density of state times the probability function will give you this type of function in the conduction band. This is the uh, function uh, for the electron concentration as a function of energy. And you can see that most of the electrons are concentrated at the bottom of the conduction band. Likewise, the density of state of valence band, which in this near the top of the valence band goes as E squared, and multiply by that by 1 minus F, probability of finding a hole or probability of finding uh, an empty state, not finding an electron, that product gives you a function looking like this. This is the distribution of holes as a function of energy in the valence band. Now, if you integrate this whole thing across the energy, that represents the energy colored red here. Uh, uh, that represents the area colored red here. Um, that area is the total number of electrons in the conduction band, or electron density in the entire conduction band. And the area shaded blue here, it gives you the hole density uh, in the entire valence band. Now, uh, this, in order to, so if you perform the integral, then you get that uh, electron density in the conduction band and hole density in the valence band, but this, uh, the, this uh, integral can be done analytically. You have to uh, use some numerical technique, uh, but there are some simple cases, uh, uh, important simple cases that can, uh, that you can do this uh, integration analytically. So that is the case when your EC minus EF, conduction band bottom minus the Fermi level, is much greater than KT, thermal energy. Okay? Or EF minus EV is much greater than KVT. That is, in this case, it means that your Fermi level is far away from the band edge. 
If that's the case, then we can approximate the Fermi direct distribution function or Fermi direct probability function with a simple exponential factor, which is the Maxwell Boltzmann uh, probability function. Then you can do the integration um, and you can rewrite the uh, integrate integral like this. Okay? And you can re-express this integrand as this. You take the exponential factor out um, and you define n, n of c. Um, so, so what you do is you insert minus ec plus ec inside and take ec minus this part, this part out because it does not depend on e so you can take that outside the integral and you are are uh, you are left with this part inside the integral which is this and likewise you can do the same trick with the whole density and you're left with these exponential factor containing formula level and the uh, formula level and the uh, top of the valence band um, and the integral uh, of the remaining which is a product of density of state times the exponential factor containing energy this quantity is called the effective density of states. It's not exactly the density of state. Density of state is these. Okay? It is a quantity closely related to the density of state, but it's multiplied with an exponential factor and integrated throughout the band. So we call that an effective density of state for conduction band and the valence band. Now you can do the integration here, and you will get a quantity uh, looking like this and so this is the effective density of state for the conduction band this here is the effective density of state for the valence band now I want to point out that this is a quantity that depends on temperature it is also a quantity that depends on the effective mass okay. so larger effective mass means higher density of state, effective density of state that is, and also higher temperature means higher effective density of state. Now we can write down a carrier concentration in a simple compact form for a non-degenerate semiconductor, that is a semiconductor in which the Fermi level is far away from the band edges. Um, we can write down the equation for electron concentration in the conduction band like this and hole concentration in the um, uh, valence band like this. Now, we know everything. We know the um, effective mass. If we know the band structure, then we know the effective mass. In, in reality, you could just look up some references. People have measured it, calculated it. It's well known. All other parameters are either universal constants in the temperature, you know the temperature uh, that you're operating at. So all we need to know is this, the EC minus EF or EF minus ED. That is, where is the Fermi level located relative to the bottom of the conduction band or the top of the valence band? That's something, uh, that's, that's the only thing that's missing um, and that prevents us from finally calculating the density of uh, carrier concentrations in the conduction and valence band. Now, before we go on and, and attempt to calculate the EF, uh, we can derive a very useful expression that does not contain EF. That is, by noticing that this expression for uh, this expression for electron uh, contains negative EF, this expression here, uh, I'm sorry, positive, minus and minus here, plus EF, this expression contains minus EF. So if you multiply these two, then EF will cancel out, and you're left with this. So the product of N and P, product of electron concentration in the conduction band and the whole concentration in the valence band, that is um, equal to the product of the effective densities of states, times an exponential factor containing the band gap energy. 
This is called the law of mass action. It is valid for a for any type of semiconductor, intrinsic or extrinsic, which we will introduce uh, in the next video. So this is a very, very widely applicable expression that you will find very, very useful.